Hello wine lovers, Trophy Wine Hunter, welcome back to my wine channel. Today is going to be a bit of a different type of video. I'm going to do a review of many of the wines or the Napa or North American caps that I've drank over the last um, course of the 2021 year. I find this is kind of very useful because now that I have my ratings and you have videos, there's no kind of fudging the numbers. And so I go back and really kind of recap what I've drank. And I think that's very useful, not in the sense of what I rated it, uh, the actual scores, but how they kind of, um, what levels there are and how I kind of place them in the continuum of things. I think that's really important to do some type of assessment once in a while. One of the great things about this channel for me is that it forced me to go out of my comfort zone. So I'm primarily a Bordeaux drinker and a little bit of Burgundy, but, and I was never really a big Napa uh, or North American cab drinker because I don't like high alcohol. But what this has taught me is it's very dangerous to generalize. You can't just say, I don't like Napa cabs, period or I love Bordeaux's, period, because it's there's such a continuum. So really to make those type of generalized statements is um, a little bit um, illogical and not kind of naive. So that was very useful to me um, because I've said that for many years to people. The people that know me all know that I say that. I don't like Napa cabs. And now I've realized that that's yeah, a very silly statement because that's impossible, there's so many styles. So I thought I'd just go through what I've drank and my ratings and what I've liked. Um, so I'm gonna kind of refer to some of my notes and you can refer to my videos. So of the wines that I've drank this year, the top rated wine that I had was the Opus 2005, um, then followed closely by the Caymus Special Selection 2016, um, and then I liked a lot of wines in the nine. After that, it kind of drops down to a lot of wines in a similar um, kind of variation. I've drank wines uh, from most of the years, and I can make some generalizations. One thing I do know is that personally, I don't really prefer the Orange Swift type style of wines. So I've drank two of them. I've drank the 19 Abstract, and I've drank the um, 17 Palermo. Palermo. And both of them, I rated them good, but not 90 points. So that's, I know that for my personal style, that perhaps that's not type of my style. And what I've come to realize is not that, not that I don't like Napa cab wines. I think I like the kind of older style of Napa cabs because they were very similar to Bordeaux and that makes sense. Um, the other thing I've realized is that we're in a very fortunate time. We're, we're having some, some great vintages of Napa wines. So starting from 12 for the next five years, 12, 13, 14, um, 15, and 16, were all spectacular years in general for Napa and North American cabs. Um, 17 was the wildfires, and so that's a little bit of a drop-off. Although I had... Um, the 2017 uh, Louis Martini, and I thought it was decent. I don't think any of the wines were terrible, but I think given a choice, probably the 17s are um, um, not as good as the other years. 18 came back to be a magnificent year too, and that has also, um, the wines that I've had are generally very strong, very tannic, very alcoholic. Um, I had the Camus 2018 and the Joseph Phelps 2018, both of them, I found um, one of them scored 91 points, one of them I scored 90 points, very strong, very tannic. So you might want to ask, is this kind of just a uh, media hype? How come it seems like every year in Napa, it's a great year, other than 17 with the wildfires? I think part of that has to do with global warming, um, because as our mean temperature of our earth is getting hotter, that's actually good for the Cabernet Sauvignon grape. Having said that, um, that could turn in the future because there is a point where it gets too hot and then the Cabernet Sauvignon grape expresses too much alcohol and too much ripeness. And so for all those people that are not fans of Camus, 
that's what a lot of wines will eventually taste like or fight not to taste like uh, because that's what you get very fruit forward lots of intensity lots of alcohol and that's what you kind of fight for and that's the um, issue that winemakers have to fight with if they get too much alcohol they get too much um, fruitiness and they don't get other things like good acidity um, or good tannin structure the wines are going to be flabby or going to feel like jam and so um, it is a tricky continuum. Um, the comment section, I'm going to list out all of the scores that I have tasted of America, sorry, North American Cab. That includes um, a Washington Wines of Substance that I've had a couple of bottles, which I've enjoyed. Um, and then, you know, the corresponding, you can go to the corresponding review. It's just a nice thing in my mind to always review and kind of look back at the scores. And when I look back at the scores, I don't think anything is out of line. I'm not saying, wow, geez, that, I rated that too high, I rated that too low. Um, in fact, these ratings have now told me that I probably have rated my Bordeaux wines that I've tasted. Some of, I've tasted some exceptional Bordeaux wines over the last um, several months. I probably rated them too low. Uh, because looking at some of these looking ratings, forward um, I don't have a lot of Napa in my cellar again that's not really my personal preference but um, I am going to put this on the poll section under the um, I guess there's a poll or discussion commentary section whatever that's called um, that's new to my channel that I've got now so people can vote um, these are comparable wines. So again, I was very fortunate. Someone gave this to me. This is the Stag Sleep 2017. And I put a poll which one I should drink next. And this is an interesting wine called Lady of the Dead um, from Frias Family Vineyard. Quite frankly, I don't know anything about it. I just love the bottle. I looked at the bottle. I said, this is kind of neat. I actually thought it was the Wines of Substance or maybe the Orange Swift people that were doing it. But I um, bought it because of the label and thought I'd try it out. So I'm gonna have a poll and see which one I should drink next. And likewise, I have some higher end um, North American um, caps that I can kind of uh, would like to try. So I'm gonna put a poll out for these two. So the first one, and again, I was very fortunate to get this from a friend, 2005 Cochita Creek, Cochita Creek from um, Washington, I believe, the Columbia Valley. Um, and then also the um, Dominus 2008. And again, why I put it in bags, I just like to keep the, the labels nice and clean. Um, sometimes, sometimes when I put them into my racks, they'll get scratched. Uh, does it matter? Not really, but it's just something that I do now. I just, uh, sometimes I'll wrap the label. Of course, when you bring it out uh, for people to drink, I like to have nice, neat label, labels. That's just personal preference. Some people like really scratchy labels to show that it's been aged. Um, my preference is to have really beautiful labels um, that are immaculate. Um, so that's just me. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and until next time, happy drinking.